All right, so a little bit of a niche video coming in today. Uh, this is Phil's ROG Ally, and today we are going to be opening it up and showing you how to change the drive, courtesy of Crucial, who sent us two of the new P310 drives, uh, 2230 and 2280. So we're gonna talk about both of these and kind of just take you along for the ride of what it takes to actually upgrade the storage on one of the most popular handhelds. So this is Phil's, it's not mine, it's not sponsored by ROG or any of that. So let the hate flow through you, just flow it somewhere else. All right, so the Crucial P310 drives, they're Gen 4 drives, uh, what, 7,100 7, megabytes per second. Uh, same drives, but two different sizes. So we have the 2230, which just equates to the length of the drive. Most people with like desktops probably never see this because these really are very, uh, like niche cases when it comes to being used. So obviously the ROG Ally uses it. I think the MSI Claw uses it. Uh, and then various Surface laptops from Microsoft use it. So it's not a very widely used type of product, um, but they ended up taking the same exact controller chip in NAND and put them on a 2280 drive, which is the full length of what you would use, say in a desktop computer or a lap regular laptop or whatever. So if I open this guy up and kind of show you real quick, just so you can understand the difference, if anyone that may not understand what 2230 versus 2280 is. So you can see this drive is like mostly empty, right? In terms of like the substrate, we look at the backside, there's nothing back there but a label. Um, but that's because of the Micron has been able to just create such large capacity NAND. Um, it means now you don't have a full array of chips on there to give you the, the capacity that you're looking for. So if we take a look at the 2230, uh, it's actually really, cute, to be honest. And Phil back in the day, look at that. <laughs> Phil back in the day, like, threw an SSD board in his mouth to chew it up, like a SATA SSD to, to be like funny. He swallowed a cap, a cap that day and he tasted solder flux for about a month. If he did that with this drive, he might accidentally swallow the whole thing and then he's going to the ER. So anyway, these two drives are essentially identical, except one is 2230 and one is 2280. So we'll set the 80 aside. That'll work in pretty much any laptop computer, desktop computer, anything that uses standard length drive. But like I said, these allies uh, use 2230. So if you got a 512 or even a one terabyte, then if you want more storage, because remember that this for all intents and purposes is a mini laptop. And I say that because it doesn't run any sort of special OS. It is a full blown Windows. It does have like basically shrunk down components that you would find in like an all-in-one computer or a laptop thrown into a handheld size. So we can throw regular drives in here that'll fit and give ourselves more capacity. So he's coming from a one terabyte to a two terabyte. And when I told him we were gonna do this video and he was, how am I bleeding? <laughs> how am Already? And then the box ripped back a cuticle or something. <laughs> Uh, okay, so also too, I forgot to mention, uh, the Steam Deck also uses 2230. So like, and Phil was just telling me off camera while I was getting a glove on my bloody finger. Um, it did fit, so you can't quit, I guess. Um, so the Steam Deck came with like a 64 gig, almost like a bare bones version where it was intended for you to throw your own storage in there. And it was like EMMC type storage. It was nothing good. It was like trying to run an OS off of like a micro SD card. So obviously you wouldn't want to do that. So that's why this kind of a, would appeal to a lot of people. So to take it apart, we have six stainless steel screws on the back. I'm gonna be using my iFixit to take these off. Uh, go a little bit bigger one. And dang it, that's what she said. <laughs> and then we are going to just use our cap here for our screws. And then we're gonna utilize the case right here because we don't wanna be putting all kinds of pressure as we're pushing down on the on the deep of the joystick pads because they can, we don't want to break them. <laughs> so we're gonna use this as kind of a holder as we take it apart. It would be nice if this had an additional storage slot because again, it is basically just a regular OS of Windows with uh, handheld parts that are just a shrunk down laptop, really. So having an additional drive would have been nice because you could have just set it up as another drive and then start saving stuff there for your Steam library and whatnot. Because this only has one drive, means you're gonna have to do a, an OS recovery from the BIOS, we'll talk about that. Fortunately, the BIOS does have and it's a cloud-based recovery, by the way, for the OS. It's the way the allies are, are designed. So uh, we can re-download the OS via the cloud. You have to reinstall all your games and stuff, but that all happens from the BIOS. And you might be asking yourself, well, what about drivers and such? The BIOS on the ally does have like basic Wi-Fi drivers and stuff uh, as a part of it so that you can do the recovery from BIOS. You don't have to do it from like the Windows installer or anything like that. These screws are way longer than I expected. So if you can't tell by the coloration of the backside, 
Phil does use it. <laughs> it is a very well-loved handheld. Look, I am telling you right now, when it comes to people that use this, I, I have tried to get into handheld gaming. I have a Legion. I just haven't been able to get into it. I never even owned a Game Boy. We didn't have the money when I was a kid to have a Game Boy, so I never had a Game Boy. All my friends did, and, but I had a computer, so I, I just can't get into it. Anytime we have traveled for work, or I had to stay at a hotel or a flight or anything, Phil is on this thing like nonstop and he uses it at, when we're traveling for like story based games and stuff to just enjoy or if he's just laying like naked in a beanbag chair eating Cheetos, he's like streaming from his gaming desktop to here. So he's playing games on his desktop just through this as a, as a remote client playing remotely. So it has a lot of use case which is pretty awesome but um, I myself just can't seem to get into it. Anyway, as you can see I opened it up just like a clamshell, there's nothing attached to it. So if you're wondering what the backside looks like, we have some rubber isolator pads right here. We can clean this dust out while we're here. Um, yeah, and then you can see the buttons and everything are attached to this plastic piece. They just make contact down here. So as you push it, it's a little lever that pushes the button on the inside. So be careful with this. You don't want to lose the two screws that didn't want to come out. That one and that one. So I'm just going to leave those there. This is now what the inside looks like. It is. Look, whether you're into laptops or handheld gaming or not, as tech enthusiasts, and I would hope that you're at least somewhat of a tech enthusiast watching this channel, you have to appreciate how shrunken things have gotten. It, it's kind of nuts. So we're gonna unplug our battery cable, which is this guy right here. Be gentle with it, just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Now we are kind of safe here. So the, and be careful with metal parts, but as you can see the SSD, the 2230 is right here underneath this little black cover. You can see the screw. We're taking out a Sabrent Rocket one terabyte drive. Phil actually put that in there himself because he initially had a 512 gigabyte version. So we're gonna take our iFixit, just remove this screw. So I got my iFixit kind of a spudger tool here and we just wanna sort of lift that up. The hard part's getting a hold of it because it's so tiny. All right, so now that I've got a hold of it by the tip, ha, wiggle it side to side and pull it out of the slot. So there's our little bitty, bitty, bitty drive with an even bigger bitty, bitty, bitty drive. And put it in in the reverse. So if you've ever installed an SSD in anything before, you could do this, especially if you've ever done it in a laptop. The scariest part probably for most people, I think honestly, is gonna be trying to unplug the battery, if you wanna know the truth. So there it is, the drive is installed. Now we're gonna, Screw it real good. <laughs> that was so that's a, good. That's, you don't know how accurate that is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> All right. They like the lights really dim. It's hard to see, you know? That's because I don't want to see myself. <laughs> <laughs> this entire video is like half a digression. Ah, that's what the audience signed up for. So, all right, uh, plug the battery back in, and now we can go ahead and put our cover back on the back. So you might be tempted to try and boot it right now and make sure it all works without the back cover, but the Ally does specifically have a chassis intrusion. Uh, sensor on it, so it will not boot if the back is open. And that's that's for that's just good practice right there, especially since we have an exposed lithium battery and such. So don't try and boot it with the back open. We're gonna put all six screws back in, then we'll take you to the BIOS and show you how to start your cloud recovery so that you can get your OS back on there and start downloading your games with your new and improved capacitai. We're gonna be using the power button and the left volume button. So we're gonna hit power. And then when we see the blue logo, we're gonna hold the left or the down volume down button. Like that? Yeah. So left volume. He reduced power to the CPU so that he had more power available to the GPU because it's such a powerful little processor. Okay, so, so from the main menu, hit Y for the advanced menu and then go right on the D-pad to the advanced tab. And the first option, which is highlighted, is the ASUS Cloud Recovery. We're gonna hit A and that's it. So we're gonna connect to our wireless. We're not gonna show you our wireless info. We'll be right back. All right, so also too, you don't need a keyboard. Even though I put in my password already, if you just tap in the little down arrow, whoops, right in the field, it brings up a full keyboard. So you can type in your password, especially if you have a complicated one, that'd be a pain in the butt. Uh, so you can type touch. So it found our cloud recovery file online. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and say next. It's ready for download. There it is. It's now doing a system downloading all of the system files. So it's now creating the operating system partition and all of that via cloud. And then let it go, let it be. 
Because what's gonna happen is it's now essentially setting itself up as like an out of box experience. It's going to be as if you had just bought it from the store and opened it up and turned it on for the first time. So you're gonna have to go back through and do a lot of your, uh, you're gonna have to download all your games and stuff again. That's why I said the downside is that by having only one drive slot, means you can't expand the storage, but leave the OS intact. You have to reset it. That's the downside about doing it this way. Unfortunately, most of the games he plays are on Steam. So Steam has its own cloud backup for game saves and stuff. So it's not like he lost game saves uh, and whatnot. But if you're playing games that have local game save only, you would lose those. So keep that in mind. That's where cloning the drive might come a little bit more in handy. But again, that's a different tutorial. Uh, but if you're, like I was starting to say, if you're playing anything that has local storage on here, back it up. Or even then, if you have local files on this, not that I think you'd be doing work in files on this, but any files you want to hang on to, back those up on a different drive or something, prior, cloud storage, something prior to starting this process. Otherwise, they'll be here while you're there. <laughs> You'll still have them. You just won't have a way to access them unless you throw them in something else. So just important note. Anyway, huge thanks to Crucial for sending us the P310 drives to take a look at. Um, like I said, they're available in both 2230 and 2280. Um, at fairly competitive prices at the Gen 4. These are Gen 4 drives, which is nice. And we'll probably see some Gen 5 small stuff coming out with future handhelds, and we'd, then we'd probably do this process all over again. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you're using handheld gaming devices, can you sound off down below what it is you're using? Even if you're a retro gamer and you're like, I'm still playing Game Boy non-color. I wanna know, I I'm curious, as somebody that keeps trying so hard to adopt handheld gaming and just can't seem to do it, Tell me why, T don't tell me what my problem is because no one has time for that. But I'm just curious as to what is it I'm missing out on? I don't know. I want to want to do this, but I can't. But you probably are. So that's why I said comment down below what handheld you're using and what games you like to play on it. Phil thinks I'm playing the wrong kind of games to really enjoy it. He's probably right. <laughs>